Hello viewer, welcome to the Science Hub. My name is Ididi Ayosa, a form 2 student in Loreto Convent Valley Road, and with me here are my colleagues, Katri and Jerry, and Egan Cabrera. Today we're going to discuss about chemical formulas and balancing equations. So we're going to start by defining what a chemical formula is. A chemical formula is represented by a chemical substance and a chemical symbol. Okay, in order for a student to write down a chemical formula of a given compound, the valencies of individual elements must be determined. The valency of an element is the elements gained or lost to attain stability in an element. Remembering the valencies of different elements is quite easy, as I shall now show you. about the periodic table, we have eight different groups and the valences are as follows. Group 1 have a valency of 1, group 2 elements a valency of 2 and it continues all the way down. But group 8 elements have only a, val have a valency of 0. This is because group 8 elements are already stable. But val valences of some elements are also variables. For example, iron can have a valency of 2 or 3 while copper can have a valency of 1 or 2. So using this can using this valency, we're going to show you an example of how to do a chemical formula. So using the symbols you had already been taught, sulfate has the symbol and aluminium AL. Sulfate has a valency of two and aluminium of three. So to balance this equation equation, you have you have to interchange the valencies. Then it becomes aluminium with a valency of 2 and sulfate, since it's a radical, you write and put a bracket. Then you add this to me. I'll also show you another example. I'm producing oxygen, which has a valency of 2, and magnesium with a valency of 2. Since the two valencies are the same, you cancel it out, then it becomes Remember that an, a positive ion comes first while a negative ion, such as oxygen, comes second. Shall now go into writing chemical equations. of magnesium plus oxygen to form the product of magnesium oxide. So magnesium and oxygen are referred to as a reactants while magnesium oxide is referred to as a product. In our chemical equation, we don't use equal signs, we use an arrow. This shows that the reaction which has taken place is permanent. If the reaction is reversible, we use two arrows going in the opposite directions. Another important part to note about chemical equations is whether they're solid, liquid, gases, or aqueous. If something is solid, we represent it by the letter S. If something is a liquid, we represent it by L. Gas is represented by a letter G. And an aqueous solution is represented by AQ. These are all important in learning about chemical equations. We're now going to start balancing equations. And I'd like to invite my colleague Rachel. And um, thank you, Eden. When writing a balanced equation, the word equation of both the reactant and the product should be written.
the correct symbols of both the reactant and product should also be written. The equation should be balanced on both sides, making sure both sides have the same number of atoms. So, you will count the number of magnesium atoms and place one, and the number of oxygen, and it's only one. You come to the product side and count the number of magnesium. It's only one. And the oxygen are only one. So this equation is said to be balanced because they have the same number of magnesium and oxygen. And after balancing the equation, you should write the state symbols under each equation. examples of balancing an equation. Alright, the next example will be potassium plus nitrogen. Potassium plus nitrogen. Giving us potassium nitrate. Under the under the potassium nitride, the potassium has um, three atoms. Three atoms. So you count the number of potassium and the number of nitrogen. So potassium has one and nitrogen has two. On the product side, potassium has and nitrogen has two. Clearly, the equation is not balanced. So you ask yourself what you can add to make this equation balanced so that uh, they all add up. The potassiums are three and the nitrogens are two. To be able to make this equation balanced, you have to look at what you can add to, after getting the LCM of the three and the two to get, to get six. So that means that everything must be equal to, to one that is not balanced. Since the potassium is not balanced, all the potassiums must be equal to six. So you add, since it is three here, so three times two gives six. So on the, on the product side, the number of potassiums has not become balanced. And on the product side, the six is automatically added because it was only one. So one times six is six. So you get six and the equation becomes balanced. We have now come to the end of our show. Thank you viewer for watching and I hope you learned a lot.